The Fortress Invisibeam system consists of three components. The post-tensioned top anchor, or necktie, the carbon Kevlar wall strap, and the bottom anti-shearing anchor. Along with these components, other key pieces of the Invisibeam system are the extreme epoxy with dual barrel epoxy gun, a bottom anchor drill jig, and a top anchor drill jig. Before installing the Invisibeam system, we must first make sure we've prepared the wall. To begin, make sure cracks are clear by removing any debris or caulk. Once clear, fill the cracks with a high compression, fast set grout. This creates a wedge and prevents the cracks from becoming a hinge should the wall ever push back into place due to a reduction in external pressure. Allow the grout to cure or use a heating source to accelerate the curing time. After the cracks are filled, we can begin smoothing the wall surface and removing any paint. For this, we recommend using a four and a half inch angle grinder with a diamond cup wheel and dustless shroud. Any remaining smaller hairline cracks can then be filled with extreme epoxy. We can now begin installation of the Invisibeam system, beginning with the top anchor. The preferred top anchor is the rim joist or bandboard anchor. The first step for installing our rim joist top anchor is to use the anchor jig to pre-drill holes. Ideally, the anchor should be installed slightly above the sill plate. Secure your jig in place with a screw and drill the four holes. Then, place your top anchor in place to ensure correct alignment and insert the four hanger bolts. Loosely place nuts on the ends of the bolts and pull the anchor out to the nuts. Do not tighten the nuts at this time. Leave a gap behind the top anchor for post-tensioning after the strap is installed and the epoxy has fully cured. While the rim joist top anchor is the strongest and preferred method, there are applications where the rim joist is not accessible due to plumbing, ductwork, or other obstacles. In this case, you can use the sill plate anchor. Set the drill jig on the sill plate and pre-drill your front holes with a 1564 bit. Then, install the two hanger bolts. When using the sill plate anchor, we also recommend using lag screws or hurricane ties to strengthen the floor joists to the sill plate on either side of your anchor. This increases the strength of the sill plate as an anchor point. The sill plate top anchor does not get attached to the hanger bolts until after the strap is installed, so we'll come back to that later. Next, we prepare for the bottom anchor installation. First, measure the depth of the holes to be drilled. This is important to avoid drilling into a cavity that could cause water to enter the space. We measure by inserting the bit into the bottom jig and holding the pegs of the bottom anchor adjacent to it. Place a piece of tape on the bit, and this will serve as your guide for all holes to be drilled moving forward. Second, we need to make sure our top and bottom anchor are aligned. Place your fortress strap against the wall and pull the top anchor pad over the strap to make sure they are in line. If using a sill plate anchor, align the wall strap with the two hanger bolts on the front of the sill plate. Now, place your bottom anchor drill jig over the wall strap to determine the accurate location for the holes. Hold the bottom anchor in place and pull the strap away. Proceed with drilling your bottom anchor holes. After drilling your first hole, use a bolt or the drill bit as a peg to keep the jig from sliding. After drilling, thoroughly clean the area with a vacuum and use the provided vacuum nozzle to clean out the holes. Dry fit the anchor before proceeding to the next step. It's now time to install the carbon Kevlar strap. Begin by placing the strap against the wall and creating a tape mask for dispensing the epoxy. Place your tape about a quarter inch alongside the edges to mark the area. Then, insert the epoxy in your epoxy gun, burp out a small amount, and dispense the epoxy on the wall. Smooth the epoxy evenly across the area with the provided trowel. And adhere the strap to the wall. Apply pressure to the strap so the epoxy forms rivets through the open grid of the strap. Apply more epoxy to the front surface of the strap and trowel evenly. Walls with a more severe bow may require using a concrete nail to hold the strap while it cures. Install the nail in one of the grid openings to avoid damaging the carbon. After removing the masking tape, fill both holes with epoxy and apply a bead of epoxy along the floor at the base of the strap between the holes. Apply epoxy to the back of the bottom anchor and smooth it evenly with a trowel. 
Insert the bottom anchor into the holes and press firmly against the strap on the wall. Apply epoxy to the back of the black square pad and smooth evenly. Pull the strap tight and adhere the black pad to the strap. Depending on the room temperature and the epoxy temperature, the epoxy will cure in anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour. You can speed up the cure time of the top anchor epoxy by using a heat lamp or other heat source. Simply place it a few inches from the black pad for about 10 minutes and then test it to ensure a full cure by pressing the tip of a nail or screw against it. If it leaves a dent, it needs more time to cure. If not, you are ready to proceed with post-tensioning the top anchor. To post-tension the anchor, finger tighten the nuts and then make two to three turns with your wrench until the strap is tight. Do not over-tighten. There should be space between the back of the anchor and the rim joist. If using a seal plate anchor, you can now attach it. Follow the directions on the front sticker to wrap the strap around the back of the anchor, place your top anchor on the hanger bolts, and then loosely attach the nuts on the ends of the bolts. Pull the strap down and out to apply the epoxy to the back of the black pad and attach to the strap. Allow epoxy to cure just like the rim joist anchor. After curing, use a right angle drill to install the two top screws, leaving about a quarter inch gap between the top of the seal plate and the anchor. Tighten the nuts on the front until the strap is tight. This should leave a gap between the front of the sill plate and the anchor. Tighten the top screws and installation of the anchor is complete. A piece of mylar is used to create a manual vacuum lamination. This removes any air voids which can weaken the strength of the system. It also creates a smooth surface for future painting over the strap. Place the mylar along the strap and trowel it along the strap pushing out any air bubbles. Ideally, leave the Mylar strap on for a few hours or more. Then peel it away and remove any remaining masking tape. Your installation is complete.